The flower's dying. It needs water. Suffering continues. I wasted too much energy for so little result. Damn. The pain. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Pepper, are you sure you want to leave this hospital? To become a nurse was a little girl's dream. But in the end, I don't feel that useful. I want more. I want to make things change. You should be proud of what you've achieved. This hospital represents hope for many people in need of help. Maybe you're right. But at the moment, I feel like we're just a cemetery waiting room. What steps are you prepared to take to feel more useful? I don't know yet. My sister believes that the real fight is in the streets nowadays. Maybe she's right. Maybe this is what I must do. If you feel that saving lives is not useful enough, perhaps it means that you've lost faith. On the contrary. My faith has never been stronger. Maybe we are all just too proud to face up to the fact that science cannot compete with God. And what about Milton Hooks? Does he share your point of view? For Milton, any change means more comfort and more peace. I disagree. Milton cheats patients out of their money at this hospital, Pippa. Are you his accomplice? Yes, I am. Is this your definition of being useful? By abusing the sick and poor? No. It is my definition of getting out of this useless life once and for all. Why do you do it? Why not? Most of the sick who paid for a bed are already dead. Or will be soon. Don't you see the futility of all this? You put a price on hope. 
This goes against everything you swore to uphold as a nurse. Report me then, Dr. Reed. Report the little nurse and keep on lying about the surgical errors, the wrong dosages and diagnostics that we all covered for the sake of our colleagues. Whose idea was it? What difference does it make? We did it together, and I'm guilty as charged. Answer my question. It was my idea first, even though Milton would say it was his, to protect me. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Miss Howcroft. How are you tonight? I need blood, Doctor. Warm, rich, vibrant blood. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark. To your nocturnal activities. Yeah. Damn. The pain. It's here again. Good evening, Mr. Elwood. Evening, Dr. Reed. Goodbye for now, Mr. Elwood. Yeah. Damn. The pain. It's here again. These nurses, bred with no respect. Hello again, Dr. Reed. I feel better already. Can I go soon? Goodbye, Mr. Hampton. We'll talk again later. My blanket. Oh, the cold will be dead. disgust on every street corner. Liars and thieves, every last one of them! Good evening, Milton. Good evening, Doctor. Still trying to save lives. Do you know that Nurse Hawkins is thinking of leaving the hospital? That's not a surprise. We've talked about it already. Does it not bother you? Sometimes I think she may be right. We should run away while we can. The question is, where can we go? Where is it safe? Tell me why you're extorting money from some of the patients here. If a patient wants a bed, he'll have to pay me a little fee. That's all. Where did you get the idea for such an immoral scam? Funny you should ask. The first time it was from a patient who bribed me to get a bed. So only then I realized I could make a fortune. Admit it. Nurse Hawkins is more than your lover. She's also your partner in crime. Of course she is. How else could I tell which bed is free? I need to know that. Have you no shame? Don't you see the city is crumbling down? Today, people are ready to pay to get a hospital bed. Tomorrow, we may be fighting for food. I'd like to see your goods. Wise choice, Dr. Reed. A reliable gun is what everybody needs these days.
Perhaps I should have considered the offer from that Cadogan fellow. It's locked. Hello again, Mr. Thatcher. Do you feel any better now? Yes. This neighborhood may stink of dog shit and reek of piss, but to me it smells like the purest mountain air. Why were you locked in that sewer? What happened? I went by the canal after an argument with a friend. Got chased by these fucking wankers and had to barricade myself in, despite my claustrophobia. Why did you run? What was the reason for your argument? Newton wanted me to go to a hospital. I can't stand being closed in. It makes me feel like I'm suffocating. Tell me about your claustrophobia. Has anyone given you an official diagnosis? <sighs> That's what the bloody doctors said. But I don't want to go to a hospital to get checked again. I'll deal with it my own way. Mr. Thatcher, do you have a job? No. Since I came back from the war, I spent most of my time and energy just trying to forget. I understand what you mean. I was a soldier too. No. Nobody can truly understand what I've gone through. Oswald, why did you not go to the Pembroke Hospital to seek medical help? I don't trust doctors. All they care about was their careers and processes. 
I won't be locked in any room again by anyone. Your fear of being trapped is not going to go away by itself. You need professional help. I've seen enough butchers in white coats to last a lifetime. Hospitals reek of chemicals and death. What I need is fresh air. Do you want to talk about why you have this fear of being enclosed, Mr. Thatcher? No, I really don't. An irrational fear like yours is usually rooted in a specific event. Perhaps it would help to talk about it. Well, Doctor, take a guess then, if you're so interested in my case. As a soldier, you're expected to kill the enemy to survive. Guilt is a powerful emotion and could lead to feelings of suffocation and oppression. My God, you're so wrong. Believe me, I would kill if it happened again. Violence is part of who I am. Do you want to talk about why you have this fear of being enclosed, Mr. Thatcher? No, I really don't. An irrational fear like yours is usually rooted in a specific event. Perhaps it would help to talk about it. Well, Doctor, take a guess then, if you're so interested in my case. As a soldier, you're expected to kill the enemy to survive. Guilt is a powerful emotion and could lead to feelings of suffocation and oppression. My God, you're so wrong. Believe me, I would kill if it happened again. Violence is part of who I am. Goodbye, Mr. Thatcher. Try to take care of yourself. Hello again, Mr. Blight. I'm happy to see Mr. Thatcher is safe for now. I'm eternally grateful, Doctor. We were total strangers, and you helped us anyway. Can't thank you enough, sir. Why do you stay here now that Mr. Thatcher's back? It's complicated. Since the war, Oswald's been really nervous with the idea of entering any hospital. And me, I've got my own issues. Can you speak about them? Rats, sir. Even seeing one. They turn me. Just want to run. It's that fear that stopped me from going after Oswald when he left. What can you tell me about the war, Mr. Blight? If you want to speak about it, of course. War was... Well, you know, sir. The stench of death everywhere. Your mates lying bleeding in the mud. Just praying to make it through and get home. Bloody nightmare. I fought in France, too. I served as a field surgeon, but it was not uncommon to repel an assault, especially at night. Yeah. The first time I was wounded, I had to protect the infirmary from hostiles. Twice. Did you know Oswald Thatcher before the war? No. We met in the battlefield. I think we were in the same boat to France. We've stuck together ever since. You are always welcome at the Pembroke Hospital. As a former officer, I'll be honored to welcome a fellow veteran. I'm not giving up on bringing Oswald back to the hospital. I just need to convince him that he needs some help. Perhaps he needs to reach that decision by himself. Could you speak to him? He doesn't usually listen to doctors, but perhaps because you've been through it, you can talk him round. What caused your phobia of rats, Newton? It happened last year following an artillery attack. I was trapped for two days in a hole under two dead soldiers. And there were rats. Go on. They started eating me as soon as I dozed. Gnawing at my ears, my fingers, 
Lips. I couldn't move. I couldn't call for help. I see. No, you don't. You have no idea what it is to wake up buried under bodies. Fucking vermin eating your flesh. Oswald. He found me and saved me. Goodbye, Mr. Blight. Take care of yourself. Good evening. Evening, Dr. Reed. I want to talk about why you have this fear of being enclosed, Mr. Thatcher. No, I really don't. An irrational fear like yours is usually rooted in a specific event. Perhaps it would help to talk about it. Well, Doctor, take a guess then, if you're so interested in my case. As a soldier, you're expected to kill the enemy to survive. Guilt is a powerful emotion and could lead to feelings of suffocation and oppression. My God, you're so wrong. Believe me. I would kill if it happened again. Violence is part of who I am. Goodbye, Mr. Thatcher. Try to take care of yourself. I am not responsible.
Opium is one of the main ingredients of Strickland's medication. Never a good move.
now everything seems under control, more or less. Don't forget to keep an eye out for this guard of something, sweetie. My guess is they're recruiting for some vengeance. In the meantime, the boys are waiting for our... Well, for your orders, my sweet queen. I hope the rumours about Clay are true. Otherwise... Good evening, miss. I am Dr. Reed. May I ask you a few questions? Who are you? What do you want? As I just told you, I'm a doctor. From the Pembroke Hospital, actually. The Pembroke Hospital, you say? I don't have any money for you leeches. I'm not here for charity, Miss... Miss Edwina Cox. So what do you want, then? Fancy buying something from me, maybe? What can you tell me about your work? I'm a businesswoman. I buy and sell things, and I send my wet boot boys after anyone who don't play nice with me. Gang member and shopkeeper. Can't be easy running double shifts. If you're interested, I may find use of a doctor who can freely walk across the city, you know. You're quite blunt, aren't you? I like people who know what they want and say what they think. This is a time of great opportunity for those ready to embrace their destiny. I'm not interested in a career in the criminal underworld, Miss Cox. Fair enough. Stay away from us, then, if you don't want to get hurt or worse. Since my return from the war, I don't feel that concerned by threats, knives, or even bullets, if you must know. That's exactly what that stupid trade unionist claimed after he attacked one of us. Booth and I reminded him a bullet beats words every time. What can you tell me about this part of town? You can't trust anyone around here. As soon as you lower your guard, you can be sure some arsehole will take advantage of you. You sound like you're thinking of somebody in particular. Take the grave diggers of Southwark. They must pay me every week, but it looks like they forgot who gave them permission to steal from the dead. Looting corpses in a mass grave. That's... That is a new low. Whatever. Hey, since you're a doctor and all, maybe you can access that forbidden area and remind those bastards what they owe. Really? Don't you think that's a little bit excessive? Bastards. All of them. This region only responds to violence and threats. You still use your husband's name, Edwina. Why is that? Why shouldn't I? He may be a bloody bastard, but I'm still his wife and his name means something round here. Are you aware of what happened to him? Yes. I'm sure he fought till the end and looked deaf in the eyes. The boys will mourn him. Except one of them, maybe. Tell me about the man you and Booth killed, Edwina. The bastard killed one of us and received retribution. There's nothing else to say. What happened exactly? I don't know and I don't care. One of ours was killed by that communist bastard, but he didn't brag for long. So you have no idea what really happened, but you executed him anyway? No one messes with the wet boot boys, Doctor. This is our territory, and this is our law. And your conscience is clear. You kill without hesitation. Violence is an efficient tool, Dr. Reed, when used properly. So you decide who lives and who dies, just like that? Yes, Doctor. Just like that. I'm not saying it's fair. I'm saying it's my way of dealing with troublemakers. Can I see what you have to sell? As long as you have money, I'll show you all I have.
the wet boots keeping things straight, these parts will be running completely amok. believe I'm doing this. I have this thirst for blood. This is despicable. believe I'm doing this.
I have this thirst for blood. I can't believe I'm doing this. From Seymour to my beloved mother, Stella. What is this doing here? Who are these people? It's locked. It's locked. Yeah. 